Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for my year-end best of video. So these are going to be the best spirits of 2016 that I have sampled, and I've sampled many a spirit throughout the year. But these are the ones that kind of stand out as, you know, a little head and shoulders above the rest, or there's something that, in them that popped that made me go, wow, okay, that's really, really good for its uh, category. So I wanted to also include some runners-up, because if the category had more than one, um, that I felt should be in here, it's going to get a mention today. All right, now one other thing, I will mention this. There are a couple in here that were technically released in 2015, but here in Texas, as I mentioned before, we have a middleman, uh, the distributor that slows things down for us. So even though it was released in 2015, we didn't get it till into 2016. Now, I'm not going to cheat them out because if they deserve to be in the best of video, I'm not going to leave them out. So. There's a few in here that are like that, but we're going to get started right over here with Isla Whiskey of the Year being Artebeg's Dark Cove Committee Bottling. Now make sure I, you know you get the committee bottling because that's what I'm talking about here. That's the one with the tan label, uh, the higher ABV, it's 55%, and it retails about $150. Now if you go to your local liquor store and you see the black labeled version of this that is the Dark Cove, that's the standard release. That one's a lower ABV still priced roughly about the same, which I don't really care for that. And if I'm going to spend that money, then I'm going to search this one out. And if I can't find this one, then maybe I go with something like this, the Lafroy Anquan Moore. Now this is a duty-free bottling. So if you're traveling overseas, you'll see that. Now it is 48% ABV. Uh, where it is, it's pretty heavily 18-year-old Lafroy uh, with some Pedro Jimenez cask maturation that's what i'm thinking uh, because when you taste it it has all the the subtle the real soft nuances of that lafroy gate team but the red fruits and the sweetness is bumped up even more to complement that nice briny uh, lafroy so great stuff for 65 dollars once again if you're going through duty free grab a couple if you can it's very very good value all right next up uh, Highland Malt of the Year is going to go to Arbalor's Abanar. Now, I know it doesn't look like it's pronounced that way from the spelling, but that's what they tell us. So I'm going to go with it. Now, it is a batch release, so every year you're going to see different batches. Batch This happens to be batch 50. I think recently I've seen batch 54 on shelves, but you'll see them all different numbers on the shelves. Regardless, they're all priced around $100. Uh, batch variants, like I said, it's there, but it's not that important to scare you away from a bottle. Uh, it is heavily sherried, and it is cast strength, usually around 120 proof or so. So, Highland Malt of the Year. Next up, Space Side of the Year is going to be the Glenlivet Nadura Heavily Peated Cask. So this is essentially Glenlivet in a heavily peated cask, all right? So you're getting a little bit of that Isla Mac kind of feel in with a really nice Glenlivet at cast strength. I believe it's 60.1% ABV. Retail pricing at about $80. Now the greatness here is when Glenlivet is cast strength and when it has a decent amount of age on it, you're going to get really good orchard fruits. You're going to get a little bit of that uh, honey in with that really big, good malt character. And then you toss on top of that a little bit of a Isla Whiskey-esque feel. So you start getting a little bit of that sweet smoke coming in. It just works really nice. Just make sure you don't mind Isla's if you're going to get this one because it does have, it's reminiscent, all right? Next up, uh, Compass Boxes The Circus. This one retails about $250. I've reviewed it. I enjoy it. Uh, very, very good blend. And I really couldn't come up with that many blends that were, you know, kind of impressing me this year. So that's the one I put up here. If I was to do an honorable mention, which I don't have this bottle now, uh, but it just came to Texas. It's the Spice Tree Extravaganza from Compass Box. That one's about $125 cheaper than the Circus. And while the quality isn't quite the Circus, I really found it enjoyable. So I might put it there as a budget buy. Again, I don't have that bottle yet just because I haven't been able to get it, but it will make its way into my bar. All right, next up, World Whiskey of the Year goes to Kavalon. The Kavalon single barrel cast strength line is tremendous. Whether we're talking the ex-bourbon barrel, the Vino Barrique, which we have here, the Sherry Barrel cask, uh, or the Fino Sherry, all four phenomenal. Of course, here that's all we get here in the U.S., but if you happen to be traveling overseas, they do multiple different types of uh, cask finishes. 
a brandy cask. I think they're doing a peated cask, uh, and so on. So if you see them, I'm sure they're all greatness. Uh, retail pricing on these, the X bourbon is the least expensive, roughly around 150, 165 ish, somewhere in there. Uh, the next up would be the sherry. I think that runs about 160 to 190. The vino barrique is running about 180 to 225, and the fino is now running about 400, 425. That's about the limit I want to pay on the fino. It's really, really good, and it is singular because you won't find another whiskey that really tastes like it. Uh, but again. Very, very expensive. All right, next up, honorable mention, goes to Ichiro's Malt Chichibu, the Floor Malted 2015. Now, this one is a very young distillery. Chichibu's only been creating distillate for about six, uh, going on seven years now. And this is a work in progress bottling. Uh, the very first release was called the first. The second release was called the Floor Malted 2012. So that was distilled in 09, bottled in 2012, three year old. Uh, this one doesn't have an age statement. It only tells us that it was bottled in 2015, but we do know that it is a continuation. So they do have the six-year-old mature stock in here, as well as probably some three-year-old. Thing to note is that it does not taste like a young whiskey. It is very, very viscous. It is high ABV at 58.5%. Uh, it almost has the viscosity and the feel of a scotch that's probably 15, 17 years old really well done and like I said I can't wait to see where they're headed with this or what the final product will be but for $150 worth picking up next up an honorable mention for world whiskey Yamazaki 18 problem is it's getting really hard to find back in the day this was $100 and it was everywhere now the demand is really high I'm thinking it's it's running something like 350 and up nowadays when you can find it I just can't I couldn't put, there's no way I could put that ahead of Kavalan or the uh, Chichibu uh, for that price point. It is lovely, but not at that price point. Next up, Booker's Rye. This is known as the big time batch. So, of course, Booker, no, is famous for just doing bourbon all his life. And right before he passed away, he decided he was going to try his hand at rye, and that's what we have here. Uh, he laid down those barrels. Unfortunately, while they were maturing, he passed away. Now, he actually took the mash bill with him to his grave because he didn't write it down. He didn't tell anybody about it. So they do not know the exact, you know, comp uh, composition of grains for this mash bill. Now, I'm sure they probably will try to recreate it, uh, but it's not going to taste like this. It's not going to be the same. I just, I just know it because it's just, it has that quality of a, a bourbon that's now long gone. That it's just uh, oily. It's ridiculous. Anyway, three hundred dollar retail, really good, but three hundred dollars. Uh, but that's going to be my top pick for American Whiskey of the Year. If you can't find that or don't want to spend three hundred dollars, you can drop one hundred on this one, the Joseph Magnus and Company bourbon. That one is a nine year old bourbon that is basically finished. Some in cognac, some in Oloroso sherry, and some in Pedro Jimenez sherry. When those two are when those three are finished and they taste them along the way and they feel like they are right, then they will do a special blend, again, tasting the blend as it goes till it's right on, and then they bottle it in batches. This happens to be batch one. I have tasted batch two and batch five, and there is a very subtle difference in the batches as far as uh, little subtle nuances, but it's not enough to ever scare me away from buying a bottle. If I saw batch two or batch five on the shelf, I'd buy it right now for $100. You can't beat it. They are also about to release a couple of, or they did just release a couple of new special bourbons, which I will be reviewing very shortly, so stay tuned for that. Next up, Rebel Yell 10-year-old single barrel. Another honorable mention for American Whiskey of the Year. This is a wheater bourbon, so wheat being the second grain. 10-year-old, um, again, single barrel. You will see subtle variants uh, from batch um, barrel to barrel but it is wonderful stuff it does like to oxidize so once you get it take a little pour out of it as you see i have done here and then just let it cap it and let it breathe don't gas it let it breathe for a few weeks and then it's really going to soften that spice the initial spice that you're going to get and it just turns out lovely uh, drinks very very well then just kind of like booker's uh, standard bourbon like that those like to oxidize as well next up the Green Spot, which is the Irish whiskey of the year. The Chateau Leoville Breton, that's what this is. So this one 
is essentially green spot that is finished in French Bordeaux barrels. So you're going to get the added benefit of some richer red fruit, red wine character coming in. Uh, you're going to get a little more tannins, a little more complexity on that route, uh, but it is lovely Irish whiskey. Now it is a little different than typical Irish. Uh, so, and this price is about $80 by the way. So if that kind of scares you away and maybe you just want to, ah, I'm just more of a traditionalist when it comes to Irish whiskey, then I'm going to stick with Old Faithful. Red Breast 12 Cast Strength. Uh, it was my pick last year for Irish of the Year, and this is going to be my runner-up for this year. All right. Canadian Whiskey of the Year is going to go to the Canadian Rockies 21-year-old. Batch 1. That is a Canada-only bottling retailing about $125. Um, it is a little hard to find, but if you can find it, it is very, uh, it's so oily and viscous. It's great stuff. Another one that was really nice is the Decades of Richness 2090. So that one is another Canada, uh, probably you'll only find it up there, retailing around 80, 60, somewhere in there. Really good Canadian uh, whiskey. Now, Back in the U.S., if you can't get hold of either one of these two, I'm going to go stick with this one. The Hand Selected Barrel by Crown Royal. This was my Canadian Whiskey of the Year last year. I find it more impressive than the Cornerstone Blend. I find it more impressive than even the Monarch because of that 103 proof. And even though it's high ABV, you don't get that grain whiskey character that kind of burns the throat and feels too thin and all that. I haven't found a batch like that yet, personally. So this is still going to be my pick for $40. That's going to be my very close runner up uh, behind these two. Okay. Now overall whiskey of the year. That's this way. Whiskey of the year for me is pretty easily going to be the Booker Rye. I just love it. I think it's magical. I don't, like I said, it's rare that you're going to get to taste something like that nowadays. Uh, $300. That is pressing the envelope. I don't like that too much. Um, but it was a one-time thing. It's worth the experience if you can find it for that. Um, anyway, American uh, Whiskey of the Year overall winner right there, Booker's Rye. Now, on to Brandy of the Year. Brandy of the Year is actually going to go to the Copper and Kings, well, it's technically the Butcher Town bottling. This happens to be a single barrel for Benny's, but I have reviewed it already, and I mentioned that there. This is 120 proof, non-chill filtered, okay? And it is a very beautiful color. The thing to note is it is no coloring added to this. This is all from barrel maturation. Uh, the other thing to note is that if you see this as the Butcher Town bottling, that's the 120 proof version, they are only $60. $60 for this quality is impressive. And at that high ABV, that drinks so, I don't, know, I don't like to use this word, but it drinks very smooth. It's very, it's very round and easy going. Lovely, lovely stuff. Now, Let's say you're in the mood for something a little more complex. The Remy XO is probably the way to go. That one is about $200 to $250, somewhere in there, and I think it's actually worth it. It's a very nice blend of cognacs, and that's my runner-up there. Rum of the year goes to Foursquare 2004. The 2004 bottling is an 11-year-old. It actually released in 2015. We didn't get it to 2016, as I mentioned earlier. But it is a combination of pot distilled and column distilled rums. So we will get the best of both worlds. And what I mean by that is pot distilled rums typically are very uh, dense and heavy when they come out of the still. Very flavorful, but they are heavier in the molasses, heavier in the, the complexities. They're darker rums. Now, when you get column distillates they're lighter they're thinner viscosity uh, you get more floral tones out of them more vanilla like caramel kind of coming out of those and so when you combine the two you kind of find a really nice meeting point in the middle that's what we have here it's not syrupy sweet it's just got just the right amount of sweetness right amount of viscosity right amount of depth and complexity great stuff for about a hundred dollars they also do a zinfandel finish and a port finish and i think those are running about eighty dollars now, backup would be El Dorado 15. I mentioned this last year. They used to have batch variance problems from year to year. Uh, this year, I'm not seeing that. So the batches and bottles I've tasted, they all seem to be very lovely. 
So that's the backup. I think that's running about seventy-ish dollars nowadays. All right, tequila of the year, Tapatio Excelencia. This one's a little harder to find sometimes, retailing about one hundred and eighty to two hundred dollars, but it is a one-liter bottle. Beautiful color. Um, that's going to be my overall pick for tequila of the year. Backup to that would be Casa Nobles single barrels. Now, being, being single barrels, you know the drill. It's going to be a little different, barrel to barrel, bottle to bottle. But they typically have more complexity than the, uh, you know, the usual Casa Noble, just vanilla bomb. It's not like that. This one has uh, more baked agave coming through, a little earthiness, vegetal, along with that vanilla and those other really nice notes of Casa Noble. Now, the sleeper in the tequila category, Herencia Mexicana. This one is a great artisanal type tequila. So small batches, a little more handmade, uh, handmade technique to it. Uh, it's kind of like a Fortaleza line. Uh, it's the same way. They use a Tejona there where it's you know, old school crushing the piñas and it's, it's definitely a lot more work but it kind of comes through in the distillate. Well, same thing here. Difference is the price here is very low. This one's only, the Blanco's 30, the Repo's about 40, 45, and the Añejo's about 50, 55. So very reasonable in price. I, you will, just like that Fortaleza line, you will see some batch variants, but it's no big deal because all the batches, while they are a little different, they're all still very, very good. All right. Next up, we're going to be covering Mezcal of the Year. So for this one, it was pretty easy, pretty easy win for this bottle. The Iberico from Del Maggi. So Iberico, that's the ham, right? The cured ham, and that's exactly what's hanging in that still when this is distilled. And somehow it turns it into magic. I don't know how it works. I'm just telling you, this is a great bottle. Sad thing is it's about 200, 250. I've seen it fluctuating anywhere in there. Very high price for this bottle. But to me, probably worth the experience. Uh, next up, runner-up, would be this one. Very rare bottle, though. Uh, this one is the San Luis del Rio from Del Maggi, and it is the one that was matured in Pappy 20 barrels. And you see this little gold thing on the side, and it actually says 20-year-old Stetzelweller wheated bourbon barrels. So while all Mezcals will be in X bourbon barrel, and all tequila for that matter, this just happened to be in a Pappy 20 barrel. Now, does it translate? Does it mean like it's going to taste like Pappy 20? Not at all. It just, I think that barrel just added a little creaminess to the palate. I remember it having a very soft minerality to it, very soft and round mezcal. Not a big, you know, smoky beast. It's just very, very calm and, and round mezcal. Mmm, good stuff. All right. Next up, the sleeper, the Pierre de Almas. Now, this one is a great line. And I don't care which one of these you get, they all are very, very well made. This happens to be the Weber version. They have an Esparin, they have the Pechuga, they even have a Conejo, a rabbit. The Pechuga being the chicken, that's where they hang the chicken, just like the Iberico, they hang the chicken breast in there and they distill. And that actually is lovely. As a matter of fact, Del Maga's Pechuga is also excellent. Uh, but then they do, like I said, the rabbit and stuff like that. But you don't have to go all that route. You know, I mean, that's, they'll start getting pricey. Just stay young, stay um, you know, a little less on the price. About $50, $60 for this, and it's worth every penny. So that's the one I would recommend there. Now we're going to do to Gin of the Year. And Gin of the Year is actually going to be, for me, Brooke Lottie's The Botanist. Now The Botanist, this is an old bottling of The Botanist, the square one. They've now since changed this. It's now round with all the herbs that are now printed on the neck here are actually embossed in the glass around the bottle all the way down. Beautiful bottle. Still the same price at about 30, 30 ish dollars, 35. Uh, thing to note is that since Brook Lottie's been distilling scotch for many years, they know how to do it. So this is a great distillate. You don't have to pour this on tonic or you know, mix it in a martini for it to be great. You can sip this and it's great. Pour it on a rock, a little, you know, little lime zest on it, bang, it's greatness. Um, now beyond this one, while that's really good for sipping, it's really good for martinis, kind of the lighter cocktails, if I'm going to go deeper into a gin cocktail and maybe make a Negroni or I'm going to make a Martinez or something of that nature, anywhere like where sweet vermouth is going to be used, 
I want to go this route. Ran some old time gin. I love this gin when it comes to mixing uh, cocktails. It loves orange peels. It loves orange oils. Um, what else to know about this one? Oh, unlike other old time gins that add sugar, no sugar added here. This is all getting its sweetness from the uh, Pinot Noir barrels that Ransom actually makes himself. He's actually a, a wine producer first and a distiller second. So this has spent six to eight months in his Pinot casting. It's gotten all that color and a lovely moderate amount of sweetness. You can sip this on a rock once again. Um, you can make an old fashioned. That's one of my favorite cocktails to make with it. It's just an old fashioned, except sub in that for a bourbon. All right, vodka of the year is going to go to the Hammer and Sickle Vodka. $40, I think it's a great value for $40. And don't believe that, you know, talk about well, all, all vodkas are the same. They're all, you know, colorless, odorless, and without distinctive character. No, no, no. That's a, that's a U.S. regulation. All these from Russia and Poland and other EU nations, they have their own set of rules. And those set of rules allow them to leave in flavors. They actually allow them to add some flavors without even putting it on the bottle. Now, it sounds like cheating, but hey, if they create the best tasting vodkas in the world, then that's probably where everybody should be doing, in my opinion. Because as long as it tastes good and drinks well, then that's what's important. All right, as long as nothing bad for you. All right, so $40. Now, if you want to spend more and you want to spend maybe $180 to $100, go with the Jewel of Russia Ultra, which this is here. This happens to be the little painted version, which is, you know, $20 or $30 more. But you don't need to do that because if you just get the regular bottle that looks like this, it says Ultra on it, it's $100, 80 to 100 and it is great, great vodka. And I'm talking on the, on the level with like Beluga Gold Line. It's right up there, very well made. Now, if you don't want to spend $100, and maybe you can't find Hammer and Sickle, if you can find Jewel of Russia, the classic, that's the one that's red label, uh, looks like this again, but that one's only like $30, $40, and that's a beautiful vodka. So these are going to be my, that's my runner-up, Jewel of Russia, and this is going to be my vodka of the year because it's price and quality. So anyway, if you felt like I left something out, feel free to leave that and, you know, comment. Uh, we can all discuss it. Hopefully you might stumble on something I didn't even know about. And that's great, too. We all share that knowledge and information. Uh, thank you for watching. Keep leaving those great comments. If you ever want to message me, uh, you can feel free to uh, go to Facebook on my Liquor Hound page. You can contact me there. Be sure and like it while you're at it. And thank you so much. Everybody have a great evening, and here's to a wonderful 2017. Cheers.